This is the SCAR 17S. Thanks for watching. Hello and welcome to another episode of Peace, Love and Guns. I am Will, your host, and this is of course the SCAR 17S. We're very excited to shoot it. We want to thank the generous host that allowed us to shoot his gun again. He's owned this for some time now, uh, as he also owns the SCAR 16S and the SCAR 20S. You can check the links down in the doobly-doo for those videos, but today this video is all about the SCAR 17S. So the SCAR 17S is of course the 762 NATO or the 308. Technically it's specifically a 762 NATO. Technically the Sammy specs are different. <laughs> so the SCAR 17S is of course a 762 NATO variant of the SCAR family. This is the carbine version of that family. And uh, isn't it just a beautiful piece? Um, it's got, of course, all of the regular SCAR accoutrement. Um, the difference between this and the SCAR 16S is, of course, it has this handy dandy little 762 NATO magazine. So that's kind of nifty. It's got all the SCAR features that you have come to know and love. For example, the UGG boot style of stock. It's got uh, a six position extendable stock, as well as it is foldable. As well as the stock is foldable, ow, tendonitis, <laughs> and is fireable from the folded position. And then, isn't that just like a nice little compact package there? Wow. Oh, was wow. This is uh, another mostly ambidextrous gun, and this was designed on a kind of AR-15 battery of arms to some degree. Uh, you have a ambidextrous push button style of magazine release on this side and on the other side it is a lever style so you can't push on the front side of it you have to push toward the back side to actuate that magazine release the action can be swapped from right hand side to left hand side so in this configuration you have kind of an AK style battery of arms whereas on this side you have more of an AR-15 style battery of arms the bolt hold open is only on this side of the gun. You don't have it on the opposite side, but the gun is structured in such a way that if you have the, the cocking handle on this side, you can cock and lock it back, clear malfunctions and whatnot. Or if it's on this side, you can cock, lock it back to clear malfunctions and whatnot. Um, so that's kind of neat the way that they do that. Everything's kind of accessible, uh, regardless of what side you've got the cocking handle on. It would be my preference if it was just ambidextrous from the factory and you have that sticking off both sides. The gun is super easy to disassemble like its brothers and sisters in the SCAR family. Uh, our magazine comes out like so. Check our chamber. Um, the butt cap comes off like its bigger brothers. And uh, you've got a little storage space in there. You can probably swap out for different uh, length and different style of recoil absorbing pads. Um, but yeah, taking this apart is super simple. We simply push this pin out and the gun allows you to drop the lower just like that. You got your fire control group in there. It's your ambidextrous selector. The stock simply pushes off. Is this going to come shooting out at me? Nope. So there's your UGG boot. Your recoil spring guide rod. The bolt carrier group comes to the rear and then this is where you can remove the charging handle. And then there is your 762 NATO 308 style bolt carrier group. And then that gun is ready to be cleaned or whatever have you going on there today. Drop her back in. Put in our recoil spring. 
put our charging handle back in, it indexes in this little open spot right there. And when you push it forward, then it's captured inside this side of the rail. Put that in there. Reinstall the Ugg boot. The SCAR guys are all going to get mad that I'm saying that. <laughs> I love this gun, but um, or I love the family of guns so far. I've never shot this one. The lower receiver goes back on. And you push it down toward the stock and push the pin in. So that's a uh, disassembly of the SCAR 17S. So uh, that's uh, pretty pretty groovy there. It is of course a piston gun. So uh, as opposed to direct gas impingement style weapons, you have it running fairly clean because it doesn't blow gas and hot debris into the action. Uh, all of the gas settings are up front. Uh, this family of weapons is pretty cool because you can actually adjust the gas block settings with the push of a finger. You don't need a cartridge or anything like that to actually select the adverse condition setting. So that's kind of neat. Your sights are a battle sight. Um, they can be dropped down to get out of the way of your optics. And along the uh, line of thought with the optics, you can also adjust your stock with a different uh, cheek weld. You can lift it up to have a, a nicer cheek weld for optics. So that's pretty cool. I actually rather like this in the up position, uh, even for the iron sights. Uh, it just kind of snaps up there and it's good to go. This also comes with the FN muzzle brake. It's a four prong at the end with some of these uh, fish gill style thingies that shoot blast and concussion out to your buddies beside you on the range. It's a combination flash hider and muzzle brake uh, device and uh, it works pretty good especially at blasting the people to your left and right eardrums out when you're on the range. The gun of course has a monolithic Picatinny rail upper and Picatinny rails on the bottom and sides of the handguard. This feels very similar in uh, ergonomics to the SCAR 16S. Uh, it's just a little bit heavier. Uh, how much more heavy? I couldn't say. Three quarters of a pound. Feel. It feels like how I remember the 16S for the most part being, uh, which is very comfortable to handle, uh, especially empty. When you get a loaded magazine in it, it is of course quite a bit more hefty. This is only halfway loaded. Uh, with 762 and it's already starting to get a little hefty but um that's really split in hairs because it's a it's a light weapon i think it's time to shoot this thing <laughs> let's do it <laughs> let's do it you guys all right here we go scar 17 s first shots gas her up rattling my fillings out yeah um, so initial impressions uh, it's a thumper you can definitely tell that it's uh, delivering an impressive payload um, <clears throat> I am getting a little bit of face slap with it with this cheat guard that I wasn't getting with the 556 variant um, I mean it really it feels like my face still feels like someone was smacking me a little bit um, and there's definitely a little bit of a rattle your feelings kind of uh, thing going on. So uh, that might have a lot to do with the muzzle brake. And you can tell it hits with authority downrange. We're at about 40 or 50 yards shooting steel. And um, it's moving those plates. They're all uh, gone now. So we'll go reset, shoot them some more, make sure there's not huge cavities in them. Um, we don't really shoot this with 308 a whole lot, but um, AR-500, they should be able to take a couple. Let's go and take a look. Oh, that round is warm that was in the chamber. We're gonna have cook off in the <laughs> chamber. Yeah, that's not too bad. Thought it'd be worse, actually. Yeah, I did too. Well, look at that paint running. Your turn. My turn. Your turn. Go.
Do these magazines make my butt look big? She is pretty light, ain't she? She is pretty light. You ready? Ready. Want me to shoot your camera? Mm, please do. Definitely got some thump to her, don't you? She sure do. <clears throat> it's definitely. Ow. I would say it's probably the kickingest 308 I've ever fired. Uh, it's not quite there for me, but it's uh, not far off. Uh oh, what do we got going on there? Hmm. Huh. They kind of nosedive into the front of the magazine? Well, it just didn't go above the magazine. Weird. Indeed. Huh. Yeah. What do we have going on there? Okay. It'll be fine. I have a feeling it's going to do the same thing. <laughs> ah, yeah. She's got some oomph to her, I'll tell you what. She do have some oomph to her. It doesn't help that it's so light. But at the same time, if you try, you can keep it on target pretty decent. If you try. If you try. As another YouTuber would say, it's skookum is frag. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a skookum chooch'er, right? Yeah, it chooch'es real good. All right, we're just gonna do a couple uh couple quick shots with this and uh, do a little bit of a reload and a little bit of a pew pew pew. Try that again. The butt stock's too long. <laughs> with authority that's for sure so uh, I might just be a little wimp but uh, <laughs> this gun the kick is not insignificant let's just say that it does, it does work your shoulder over just a little bit. And uh, she does get hot. I don't know if you can see that smoke coming out. You can out definitely there. see it on the camera. <laughs> of course, like any semi-automatic 308, she's going to get get nice and warm up under the barrel trunnion. And of course, the gas block is going to be super toasty right now. It does take a while for that front sight to heat up. And even when it gets hot, we find that you can still manipulate it, so that's kind of cool. Exciting. You want to finish her up? We got 20 more rounds. Oh, we're good. You're good? Actually, I brought out an extra 80 as well. Oh, okay. Well, then I'm going to bump fire it. Why? Because reasons. It feels too stagey. Like, it's a single stage that feels like a two-stage because it has so much creep at the front. Yeah. But but it's not the worst trigger I've ever touched. It's not an MR716 trigger? Yeah. This trigger is better than that trigger was. Yes, I agree. Orders of magnitude better. All right. Make sure you shoot your uh, your camera while you're doing that. We're gonna try not to do that. Gets a little dusty. Oh man, that's just too fun not to do. Woo! I mean, you gotta get it heated up a little bit, right guys? I wanna thank you for watching Peace, Love, and Guns. Make sure to comment, like, subscribe, share, all of those wonderful things. We're trying to spread love and joy to all the children of the world. And uh, I mean, just who, who wouldn't think that to be just super fun? I mean, it's awesome, it's awesome. All right, so in summation about this uh, SCAR 17S, um, what I can say about it 
if you are in the market for a semi-automatic 308 or 762 NATO carbine and you are in the realm of a budget of about 3569 uh, this might be the ticket for you it's uh, got ambidexterity in its corner for the most part um, a couple considerations it is quite the thumper um, it's a very light gun for what it is and um, you do feel that on the receiving end if you're a wiener like I am but um, I think if we put a nice magnified optic on here like you might be likely to do with a weapon like this um, I think that would tame it down just a little bit uh, your little 16 inch long barrel uh, with its muzzle brake it does kind of concuss out to the sides a little bit so you might consider using a little bit of range etiquette when it comes to you know shooting at your local outdoor gun range uh, you know you don't want to make the people next to you go home crying or anything like that uh, it is a fairly fairly loud and concussive muzzle experience uh, all in all uh, it's an awesome little gun this is uh, it's what I like to call a thumper because it really thumps the shoulder but you also have a really nice effect down on uh, target um, so cool uh, yeah that's the scar 17 s it does get warm it does get warm so if you're gonna be shooting it for extended periods of time or doing a lot of uh, stupid shit, like bump firing it or shooting a hundred rounds within five minutes you might consider putting on some ladder rail covers because with the shooting that we've done today, we are getting uh, a, quite a bit of warmth to come down around the barrel uh, trunnion slash chamber area right here. So I could see where that might get uncomfortable if you were to do a lot of extensive shooting. Perhaps, it's just a minor consideration. Yeah, it's a scar, it's awesome. It's a gorgeous gun and uh, it comes in a couple different gorgeous colorations. It goes pew pew very well. So, I mean, I could see this fitting uh, your primary uh, concealed carry <laughs> option. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. I mean, I could see this having use uh, for somebody that maybe has a taste for the finer things and wants a nice uh, a gun to ride around with them on, on their ranch or whatever. I mean, you could have this sitting in a little gun caddy uh, in your Jeep or ATV or whatnot. And, um, you know, rattlesnake. Boom, boom, boom or um, you know bear boom 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 whatever have you whatever you got going on that day um, this this might be a nice little gun to ride along uh, law enforcement um, something like this nice little tight package I mean if they're gonna bring out the AR-15 why not bring out a 308 I mean it's that's kind of a it's kind of a good little use and it's so compact so sexy so sweet yeah, ouch, that, that burns. <laughs> that was like <laughs> That's the gas block. The gas block gets hot, and it stays hot for a little while. Sights, completely adequate, very nice. Uh, pretty easy to get shots on target. I was probably flinching quite a bit because, um, uh, frankly and honestly, uh, this is, uh, it hurts my wee little shoulder to shoot. Like, it, it honestly it doesn't feel great to shoot this gun for me. Um, your mileage may vary. Uh, but you know put an optic on there. Maybe this is the type of weapon. You might like to have a bipod out front um, Anything like that'll kind of help to mitigate recoil perhaps swap this out for something That's a little less hard rubber and a little bit more of a kind of decelerator style of recoil pad Just uh, just some thoughts and uh, <coughs> Yeah, all in all great gun though. No comp no complaints on the functionality. We did see one round malfunction where the round kind of nosedived into the front of the magazine. That was peculiar, but I think we had already perhaps had it fail or go to, into battery with that round and then pushed the bullet back further into the casing, which is maybe why it hit the front of the magazine. We would like to thank the generous donor that allowed us to borrow this gun and shoot it today, as well as the Britons of Gray Fox Ranch and Gray Fox Gunsmithing for letting us come out and uh, shoot their dirt up. It's always fun, and we really appreciate them having us out. So make sure to comment, like, subscribe, share, all of those wonderful things. Uh, all of the appropriate links will be down in the doobly-doo below. And, uh, you know, stay safe, be good, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Toodles. <laughs>